the high level meeting of the general assembly to commemorate and promote the international day for the total elimination of nuclear weapons is close to order Heads of state and government, uh, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I warmly welcome all of you to this high-level meeting. I also would like to acknowledge the presence of His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, and welcome him to the meeting. Members uh, will recall that by its resolution 68-32 of 5th of December 2013, the Assembly declared 26th of September as the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. In its Resolution 74-54 of 12th December 2019, the General Assembly reiterated its request for the organization on 26th September every year, a one-day high-level plenary meeting of the Assembly, to commemorate and promote the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. That meeting is being held today, 2nd of October, pursuant to General Assembly Decision 74-562 of 22nd July 2020. The International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons is devoted to furthering the objective of mobilizing international efforts towards achieving the common goal of a nuclear weapon-free world, including through enhancing public awareness and education about the threat posed to humanity by nuclear weapons and the necessity for their elimination. Allow me now to make a statement as President of the General Assembly uh, from the rostrum. Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. 75 years ago, the horrific consequences of nuclear weapons were made undoubtedly clear. Up to 226,000 people lost their lives when these devastating weapons were used on Japan. This United Nations was born out of the devastation of those years. And this General Assembly was clearly committed to nuclear disarmament from its inception. The very first resolution passed in 1946, aimed to achieve global nuclear disarmament. Excellencies, nuclear weapons continue to pose a grave threat to international peace and security. The only sure way to eliminate this threat is to eliminate the weapons themselves. There is no alternative. It is therefore unfortunate that the architecture developed over decades to support the goals of disarmament and enhance security is under significant strain with rising global tensions. Parties have withdrawn from nuclear-related agreements, and others are set to expire. Some member states have threatened to restart nuclear testing, aim its such challenges to the non-proliferation ar architecture we must ensure efforts are focused on returning to the common goal of world free of nuclear weapons through practical, realizable goals and commensurate action. In this regard, I would like to draw your attention to the tools that are available to help us reach this goal. The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons that was adopted in 2017 is the first multilateral legally binding instrument for nuclear disarmament to have been negotiated in 20 years. The Secretary General's agenda for disarmament seeks to engage stakeholders in innovative discussions so as to bring disarmament back to the heart of our common efforts for peace and security. Ladies and gentlemen, this year also marks the 50th anniversary of the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons which has been the cornerstone of the global disarmament and non-proliferation regime. At the 2020 MPT Review Conference to be held next year, states, parties will take stock of the progress made in the implementation of the treaty since 2015. 
and explore ways to further the progress made thus far. All states' parties need to make the most of this opportunity to renew their commitments and engage in inclusive dialogue to take practical steps in nuclear disarmament. Nuclear disarmament must remain a priority to all of us. We must continue to pursue our common goal of a free world, a world free of nuclear weapons. We cannot afford to waste any more time. During my tenure as President of the General Assembly, I will remain committed to engage with Member States to discuss the best way to move forward in our common endeavors to achieve a nuclear weapon free world. I thank you very much. Thank you. I now give the floor to the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres. Mr. President of the General Assembly, Excellencies, nuclear disarmament has been a priority of the United Nations since the very beginning of the organization's existence. Yet 75 years since the founding of the United Nations and since the horrific bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the world continues to live in the shadow of nuclear catastrophe. Some states view nuclear weapons as vital to their national security and survival. But the elimination of nuclear weapons is vital to something beyond the fate of any single state, the survival of life on this planet. Unfortunately, progress towards the total elimination of nuclear weapons has stalled and is at risk of backsliding. Growing distrust and tension between states that possess nuclear weapons have increased nuclear risks. Programs to modernize arsenals threaten a qualitative nuclear arms race based not on numbers, but faster, stealthier, and more accurate weapons. And the opportunity cost of spending money on such ill-conceived upgrades is simply staggering. The only treaty constrained this, constraining the size of the world's largest nuclear arsenals is set to expire early next year, raising the alarming possibility of a return to unconstrained strategic competition. For this reason, it is imperative that the Russian Federation and the United States of America extend without delay the New START Treaty for the duration of five years. For the sake of all of our security, the world must return to a common path towards nuclear disarmament. And states possessing nuclear weapons have a responsibility to lead this endeavor, including by fulfilling their existing disarmament commitments and by taking practical steps to reduce nuclear risk especially in today's tense international security environment, with rising friction between major powers, such steps are more necessary than ever. Ultimately, however, the only way to completely eliminate nuclear risk is to completely eliminate nuclear weapons. The Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons remains the cornerstone of the nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation regime. I call on states' parties to use the extra time afforded to them by the postponement of the 10th Review Conference to, ensuring, to ensure a meaningful outcome that strengthens this bastion of nuclear non-proliferation and includes tangible progress towards the total elimination of nuclear weapons. And I look forward to the entry into force of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which reflects the desire of a large number of states to free the world of the threat. The COVID-19 pandemic has not only extracted a grim toll in lives and economic destruction, but has also exposed the fragility of the international community's ability to act in common cause. We have seen yet again that to confront global threats, 
we need a strengthened, inclusive and renewed multilateralism built on trust, based on international law and with human security at its centre. Let this approach also guide us to our shared goal of a world free of nuclear weapons. And I thank you. the Secretary General for his statement. The high-level meeting will now hear presentations from Member States in accordance with General Assembly Decision 74-562 of 22nd July 2020. Member States, observer states and the European Union were asked to submit a pre-recorded statement of the Head of State, Vice President, Crown Prince or Princess, Head of Government, Minister or Vice Minister. These statements will now be played in the General Assembly Hall during this high-level meeting. Any introductions of these statements by national representatives who are physically present in this hall today will be made from the national seats. Participants are reminded to limit their interventions to three minutes for individual delegations and five minutes for statements made on behalf of a group of states which would include the introduction by the respective national rep representatives. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Muhammadu Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to make a statement. Mr. President, Heads of State and Government, Secretary General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the government and people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I express appreciation to the Secretary General for successfully convening this high-level meeting. Our deep gratitude also go to the President of the General Assembly and previous speakers for their remarks and contributions to the multilateral efforts towards total elimination of nuclear weapons. As we meet to commemorate and further consider the imperative of total elimination of nuclear weapons, it is right to emphasize that trafficking in nuclear materials is a potential threat to international peace and security. Concrete evidence has shown that nuclear weapons are unique in their destructive power, as well as in the scale of human suffering they inflict and the misery and bad blood they leave in their wake. Coincidentally, this year marks the 75th anniversary of the use of an atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that terminated the lives of thousands of people with severe damages to the environment. The anniversary is a forceful reminder of the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons which undermine global, national, and human security. Hence, there is need for all states to comply with applicable international laws and conventions to ensure a world free of nuclear weapons. We must therefore redouble our efforts to implement the provisions of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty being the basis of non-proliferation regime. This is to enable us to achieve our desire for total elimination of nuclear weapons. We therefore reiterate our call on the United Nations to continue engaging nuclear weapon states to speed up their efforts in disarming and decommissioning their existing nuclear facilities. The best approach to avoid damage associated with nuclear materials such as humanitarian crises, accidents, disasters, 
and criminality is the total elimination of nuclear weapons. Excellencies, to demonstrate our support for multilateral efforts towards the total elimination of nuclear weapons, Nigeria has been involved in the promotion of peaceful application of nuclear science and technology at national and international levels. Accordingly, Nigeria ratified several international treaties and conventions in the area of nuclear safety and security. We have also expressed political commitment to the International Atomic Energy Agency Code of Conduct on Safety and Security of Radioactive Sources. More so, we have developed and approved the first International Atomic Energy Agency Integrated Nuclear Security Plan for the period 2010 to 2012, with further review to cover 2019 to 2021 period. In this connection, Nigeria commands the continued efforts of the IAEA, particularly its role in monitoring and inspecting nuclear facilities. We urge states to ensure compliance with IAEA safeguards and standards at all times, as well as nuclear verification disarmament measures. In order to facilitate the development and feasible deployment of nuclear technology, Nigeria regulates and implements its energy aspiration through the relevant agencies. In addition, we are reforming the national nuclear security sector to make it robust and reliable. These reforms involve the domestication of the International Convention for the Suppression of Acts of Nuclear Terrorism, Review of Nuclear Safety and Radiation Protection Act, and Review of Nigeria Nuclear Regulatory Authority Act. To further demonstrate our commitment to nuclear security, Nigeria successfully converted the Nigerian Research Reactor, a 31 kilowatt miniature neutron source reactor for highly enriched uranium to low enriched uranium fuel. Also, in 2019, the administration set up Nigeria's Nuclear Security Support Center and developed a nuclear security detection architecture to serve as a sustainable safeguard for maintaining nuclear security and detection of radioactive materials out of regulatory control. Let me see this opportunity to highlight the 1996 advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice, which affirms that the threat or use of nuclear weapons constitutes a crime against humanity and a violation of international law, including international humanitarian law. As one of the countries at the vanguard of the campaign for the total elimination of nuclear weapons, Nigeria signed the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons on 20th September 2017 and recently ratified it on 6th of August 2020. Nigeria joined like-minded states to sponsor the resolution titled Taking Forward Multilateral Nuclear Disarmament Negotiations, which led to the legally binding treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. We are concerned about the slow pace of progress by nuclear weapon states to accomplish the total elimination of their nuclear arsenals. In accordance with their legal obligations and undertakings under Article 6 of the Non Proliferation Treaty, we again stress that the universalization 
of the Non-Proliferation Treaty is dependent upon strict compliance with its three pillars. A, disarmament. B, non-proliferation. And C, peaceful uses of nuclear energy. We therefore enjoin other member states to ratify the treaty. Nigeria also played a major role in negotiations leading to the coming into force of the African Nuclear Warfare Free Zone Treaty, the Linda Bar Treaty. We will continue to galvanize other African states to abide by the tenets of the Felinda Bar Treaty. This is to ensure that the entire continent remains nuclear free. Excellencies, while there are no easy solutions, when we confront one of the gravest existential threats to the survival of the human race, we must remain undeterred and committed to a world of safety and security, one without volatility posed by nuclear weapons. Thank you. I thank the President of the Repu Federal Republic of Nigeria for his statement. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Tommy Remangasu, Jr., President of the Republic of Palau, to make a statement. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we mark the 75th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations, one of the signature achievements of multilateralism has been our progress towards making the world safe from the indiscriminate violence and horrors of nuclear weapons. Just three years ago, we adopted the Nuclear Ban Treaty, a sign of what is possible when we are committed to dialogue, solidarity, and peaceful cooperation. This work of fostering new norms for peace and security is one of the strengths of the United Nations. That nuclear possession is as immoral as nuclear use. Palau is one of the first countries to ratify this treaty, and our constitution enshrines a commitment against the possession of nuclear weapons. We welcome recent ratifications, especially those from our Pacific family, Niue and Fiji, which are bringing us closer towards its entry into force. This is encouraging progress. We urge all other member states to join us. Last month, of course, also marked the 75th anniversary of atomic bombs being dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As the number of survivors diminishes with its passing year, we can honor their witness to nuclear devastation through concrete progress towards the total elimination of nuclear weapons. We need a renewed commitment to action to fulfill the promise of the structures and norms for nuclear disarmament that the United Nations has developed over the past 75 years, to bring into force the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, to engage in serious dialogue at next year's review conference of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, especially by the NPT nuclear states. In the Pacific, the testing of nuclear weapons has been a scourge on our region that continues to afflict present generations. The promised remediation of the lingering after effects has been inadequate and incomplete. Over the past two weeks, we have heard the need for greater ambition for the decade of action for the 2030 Agenda as our shared vision for progress. The acquisition and maintenance of nuclear arsenals diverts resources that could otherwise be used for human development. We handicap our efforts to achieve sustainable development by the possession of nuclear arms. And they do not make our world a safer place. In the 75th anniversary year, we recall the opening words of the UN Charter, that we, the peoples of the United Nations, are determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights and the dignity and worth of the human person, 
the total elimination of nuclear weapons is how we can live up to this call. Thank you and Gok Mansula. I thank the President of the Republic of Palau for his statement. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Azali Asumani, President of the Union of the Comoros, to make a statement. Mr. President, Mesdames et Messieurs, Chef de Delegation. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegation, this meeting of ours today focuses on one of the most important issues for the United Nations, the total elimination of nuclear weapons. My country, the Comoros, pays tribute to the commitment of the successive Secretaries General of our organization, who took to heart the conclusions of the first special session of the General Assembly of the United Nations held in 1978, and having given priority to effective measures for nuclear disarmament. Mr. President, ladies, gentlemen, if progress has been made in the promotion of this worldwide cause, there is still a long way to go to achieve the full elimination of nuclear weapons in the world. In this context, my country wishes to hail the efforts made by His Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, who on May 24, 2018, established a special agenda to relaunch dialogue and negotiations on uh, weapons in general and in nuclear disarmament in particular. President, my country is fully committed to the shared will to make this world, which is our own, a space of peace and prosperity, completely protected from the devastating consequences of nuclear weapons. In this way, the Comoros signed on December 12, 1996, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, or CTBT, which is supported by a verification regime, including an international monitoring system, which guarantees that no nuclear explosion will go undetected. By ratifying the, Pen the Pelinda Treaty, on 24 July 2012, uh, with 40 member states of the African con continent, Comoros commit uh, committed themselves to this uh, planetary struggle. The Comoros adopted uh, also the first, uh, was part of the first uh, group to sign the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons which is an important stage uh, towards the common goal of a world without nuclear weapons. I'm persuaded that this session, under the aegis of the promotion of the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons, will be able to make the recommendations necessary to promote peace and security, the essential conditions for sustainable development in the world. I wish the greatest success uh, to our meeting and I wish to announce uh, that my country has, sign has signed on to the conclusions and recommendations to be issued as, as the outcome of this important meeting. Thank you for your kind attention. I thank the President uh, of the Union of the Comoros for his statement. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Philip Nusi, President of the Republic of Mozambique, to make a statement. Senhor Presidente, da 75ª sessão da Assembleia Fifth Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Mr. Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, let me begin my statement by welcoming the holding of this uh, high-level event dedicated to this important theme for the security of nations and world peace as early as 1945. The issue of disarmament and mass destruction weapons control deserved a prominent attention in the architecture of peace and security in the post-World War II, particularly following the devastating and inhumane shock witnessed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The proliferation of weapons of all kinds, especially nuclear weapons, continues to divert resources that could otherwise 
be dedicated to socioeconomic development, historical fluctuations of various natures, including rivalries between the holders of nuclear weapons and of means for their use during the Cold War did not favor major progress in this critical area. This reality is exacerbated by COVID-19, which prevented the holding of the conference for the review of the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, initially scheduled for May this year. This impediment is coupled with the withdrawal of some states from basic bilateral nuclear disarmament control instruments, including START and uncertainties about the renewal of the new START, episodes of double standards and of one burden and two measures did not go unnoticed in the conduct of some states, particularly those of the so-called nuclear club. The Republic of Mozambique stands for a global security based on the denuclearization and accountability of states. Mozambique is a signatory of treaties relating to the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons and unconditionally supports the provisions of Security Council Resolution uh, 1540. As a country, we have adopted different national legislation and strengthened surveillance measures in the face of the appetite by transnational criminal networks, including terrorists who are currently active in Capital Guard province in northern Mozambique. Therefore, we urge countries with nuclear weapons to take advantage of this high-level event to ensure unreserved that they will never use their nuclear weapons against countries that do not possess them. And we, the Republic of Mozambique, are at your disposal to make our direct contribution to the security of nations and peace on our planet. Thank you very much for your attention. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Danny Ford, President of the Republic of Seychelles, to make a statement. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as a leader of one of the smallest nations where peaceful coexistence reigns, it is fitting for me today to speak to the theme of the need to mobilize political will to eliminate nuclear weapons. We have witnessed the disastrous impacts on small islands from the catastrophic and irrevocable damage of these weapons. I call upon all world leaders to eliminate nuclear weapons so that no other island state and no other country in the world will ever experience such abominations again. The world is weary of an era of converging global conflicts, widespread poverty, climate breakdown, economic downturn, and a global pandemic. We are already mobilizing extensive resources to remedy challenges beyond our means. The world does not need another load added to the existing threats. Seychelles is deeply concerned about the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of the use of nuclear weapons. The Seychelles people can disappear within a fraction of a millisecond, a rich, diverse culture built over years, destroyed, along with a unique biodiversity already at the mercy of climate change. Our presence erased and our right to existence, along with our future generations, denied. As we celebrate the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons, let us be reminded that these dangerous armaments threaten everyone and everything we love and value. Its elimination needs to be predominantly based on humanitarian grounds. This in itself is a precondition for durable peace and security and sustainable development. All member states 
have committed themselves to take on a cohesive approach towards a nuclear weapon free world. Seychelles is no exception. I consequently call on those states owning nuclear weapons to converge the efforts to adopt immediate action in nuclear disarmament. This is the actual point of departure for a world free of weapons of mass destruction. Let us build trust amongst our nations without nuclear weapons for the prosperity of our planet and well-being of the people. I thank you. I thank the President of the Republic of Seychelles for his statement. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Equatorial Guinea to introduce a statement by the head of state. They introduce Mr. President, I have the honor of introducing uh, the pre-recorded statement of His Excellency Obiang Gemma Mazo, Head of State and Government uh, uh, and President of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea. Distinguished uh, Heads of State and Government, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, Above all, I wish to express my thanks for the convening of this important meeting because of the prominence of the subject matter, which is the, the commemoration and promotion of the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. Much is made of the problems affecting our world such as development, the struggle against pandemics, migration, etc. But none of that would make any sense if the world is in jeopardy and if we cannot ensure or even guarantee the continued existence of the human race, of humankind. Nuclear weapons are not merely weapons. They are severe threat to our very existence. The voluntary, accidental, or erroneous use of nuclear weapons could lead to our disappearance from the face of the earth. That is why I wonder what is the point of manufacturing, maintaining, and even updating nuclear weapons if we are already aware of the scope of the damage they could cause. Besides the enormous financial cost, nuclear weapons are those having the greatest destructive capacity that has ever existed. It has been demonstrated that in a nuclear confrontation between countries, there will never be a winner. But there certainly would be a loser, and that loser would be humanity. Mr. President, disarmament has been an ongoing concern for the United Nations. Indeed, it was the subject of the first resolution which the General Assembly approved in 1946. The efforts that the United Nations Organization has made on this front are laudable. Efforts to achieve the total elimination of nuclear weapons should uh, be something in which we all participate. However, some are more responsible than others. I am referring to the nine nuclear weapons holding states. They also have a dangerous uh, trend of uh, confronting each other and competing. We should uh, propose that they should sim uh, we propose rather that they should simply destroy the nuclear weapons without any further delay. 
and the enormous amounts of money devoted to their manufacture, acquisition and upkeep should be devoted to more profitable ends to benefit their economies and by extension to benefit humanity as a whole. For example, for the implement implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. A small fraction of these resources would considerably alleviate many of the problems affecting humanity. Not one of the nine nuclear weapons holding countries has signed the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. And without their accession, the treaty would uh, lose as part of its very essence. I wish to address a particular call to the Russian Federation and the United States of America. Together, they hold approximately 90% of the world's nuclear weapons. They should set an example and they should make a greater effort to disarm. They can begin by renewing the uh, Treaty on Measures for the Future Reduction and Limitation of Strategic Offensive Arms, or the New START Treaty. This treaty will expire in f February 2021. If they do not do this, we would face a situation where for the first time in 50 years, these two nuclear superpowers would not have any restrictions or legal obstacles to using nuclear weapons. We understand the concerns that some countries may have for their security. No less important is the collective responsibility to seek a world which is much more peaceful the complete elimination of nuclear weapons should be achieved through frank, direct, and inclusive dialogues and negotiations. Mr. President, Equatorial Guinea emphatically rejects the existence and the potential use of these destructive weapons. For this reason, we joined the, the African Treaty to create a nuclear weapons free zone of the African Union, known as the Pelindaba Treaty. Its objective is to guarantee that Africa is free of nuclear weapons. On the level of the United Nations, Equatorial Guinea has systematically supported resolutions calling for disarmament and for complete denuclearization of the world. To conclude, I express the wish that the next commemoration of the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons be held in a safer world without nuclear weapons. This would be the best legacy for future generations, achieving peace and security in a world free of nuclear weapons. Thank you very much. I, I thank the President of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea for his statement. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. David Kabua, President of the Republic of the Marshall Islands, to make a statement. Greetings from the Marshall Islands. I am pleased to speak at this high-level meeting on the International Day for the Total Elimination of nuclear weapons. In 1954, during our status as a UN strategic trust territory, Marshallese leaders petitioned the United Nations to halt the testing of nuclear weapons. For a moment, we captured the headlines around the world. The sentiments of our voices helped to spur many of the earliest disarmament movements. But instead of listening to the pleas for help by the Marshallese people, who at the time had been displaced from their home atolls and deprived of a number of human rights, the United Nations responded with two trusteeship resolutions that further reaffirmed their quest 
to conduct nuclear weapons experiment considered necessary in the interest of world peace and security. The two trusteeship resolutions, 1082 and 1493, adopted in 1954 and 1965, remained the only time in which the UN has ever explicitly authorized the detonation of nuclear weapons. In all, between 1946 and 1958, 67 nuclear weapons were detonated in the Marshall Islands. The exposure of our people and land has created impacts that have lasted and will last for generations. These impacts to our human rights, land, culture, health, and lives, the mistreatment and migrationalization are burdens that no other nation or country should ever have to bear. For decades, we have tried to raise our plight of injustice to the world's attention. A history of human rights violations caused on our people for the purpose of world peace and security. However, we continue to struggle to realize effective progress in addressing nuclear testing impacts as well as overall elimination of such weapons. Our own experience, history, and current challenges to nuclear exposure are key drivers for urging progress in reducing and ultimately eliminating nuclear risks. We welcome effective and meaningful progress on this form from major powers and nuclear weapon states in whatever form it can occur. It is important that the international community take steps that result in time-bound and concrete outcomes aimed towards eliminating nuclear danger. We urge achievement of a world free of nuclear weapons, accompanied by peace and security, and call for a global collective goal towards achievements far stronger than symbolic momentum. The Republic of the Marshall Islands is not currently prepared to sign the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, and we will continue to study it. We remain deeply concerned regarding provisions in the treaty, which wrongfully place the heavy burden of victim assistance and remediation. Only upon the nations which are affected by tests and which risk appearing to absolve those states which conducted such testing, particularly when they are non-parties. Of course, we are taking charge of our own human rights. We have recently formed the National Nuclear Commission to help coordinate the needs of closely impacted communities and build our own capacity but we did not cause this and lack the full capacity and resources to address it. However, we will continue to be engaged with multilateral discussions regarding the treaty. Further, I would also like to announce that the government of the Republic of the Marshall Islands intends to closely study and pursue a session to partial test ban treaty of 1963. Early negotiation on this treaty were strongly impacted by the Castle Bravo test in the Marshall Islands. The Marshall Islands envisions a world free of nuclear weapons and hope that no other people would have to bear the burdens which we know of nuclear exposure. I thank the President of the Republic of the Marshall Islands for his statement. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kribas to introduce a statement by the head of state. Thank you, Mr. President, Secretary General. I have the honor to introduce the pre-recorded statement of the head of state, the head of government, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Excellency. Uh, of Kiribati, His Excellency, 
Mr. Tanis Mamou. Thank you. Mr. President, UN Secretary General, fellow leaders, excellencies, and distinguished guests, in God's holy name, greetings from the people and the government of the Republic of Kiribati. Come the Benin Mount. Kiribati is honored to join the commemoration of the International Day for the total elimination of nuclear weapons and to align the statement with the with that of the Chairman of the Pacific Islands Forum, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu, the Honorable Natano Kausea, which highlights our firm Pacific solidarity against nuclear testing and all its harmful effects and manifestations. Today we are called to recommit ourselves as members of the human family to do our best, individually and collectively, in progressing the United Nations and humanity towards the ultimate goal of nuclear weapons free world. As one of the three small island nations in the Pacific, whose atmosphere, ocean, and land were heavily damaged and contaminated by a total of 34 nuclear blasts that were conducted on and around Christmas Island in the 1950s and 1960s, Kiribati is fully committed to the goal of nuclear weapons, free world, as demonstrated by its early signing and ratification of the United Nations Treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. In the world placated by geopolitical complexities which are enhanced by our competing interests to do what is best for our respective nations and people, it seems natural that some nuclear states may find it hard to rid of their nuclear arsenals. But despite competing interests, we all share in the common goal of creating a safe and secure future for our children and our grandchildren. This should be our common ground, creating a peaceful world free of nuclear weapons for the safety and security of our most important resource, our children. Kiribati believes this is possible by planting and nurturing the seeds of peace in place of conflict, trust in place of distrust, and love in place of hate. We must start now starting from within our hearts and minds before reaching out to the hearts and minds of our children in our homes, neighborhoods, schools, communities, nations, regions, and the world at large. I believe that this is a powerful way of producing a new generation of leaders at all levels. Only by acting and moving forward together in unison and in solidarity that we can achieve the future we want a world totally free of nuclear weapons. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the President of the Republic of Kiribati for his statement. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, to make a statement. President of the 75th session of the UN General Assembly, Your Excellency Volkan Boskar, Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Three months ago, the world marked the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The memory of that morning of August 6, 1945, and the general devastating effects of nuclear weapons on humanity, biodiversity, and the environment reaffirm the global nuclear disarmament and the total elimination of nuclear weapons are the absolute guarantee against the use or threat of use of nuclear weapons. The full implementation of international conventions and treaties aimed at achieving global nuclear disarmament must therefore remain a priority for all our nations. Five decades after the 1968 Treaty on Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, an alarming number of nuclear weapons are unfortunately still in existence. We continue to witness an increasing nuclear rivalry, modernization of nuclear weapons, including their de delivery mechanisms, and weakening 
of intergovernmental arrangements aimed at curtailing nuclear arsenals and their ultimate elimination. As a state party to the African Nuclear Weapons Free Zone Treaty and the 1996 Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, we reiterate our long-standing commitment to the total elimination of nuclear weapons for a safer, nuclear-free world. As we approach the 10th Review Conference of the NPT in 2021, we call for renewed momentum among all states to implement their disarmament commitments. My delegation commends the progress made so far, particularly in the establishment of nuclear weapon-free zones, the voluntary renunciation of nuclear weapon programs, and countries withdrawing nuclear weapons from their territories. So we therefore call on the nuclear states to join the universalization of the NPT treaty and to commit to complete nuclear disarmament. The prospect of total war with the certainty of mutually assured destruction is not a credible stance for our civilization in the 21st century. In conclusion, as we commemorate and promote the International Day for the total elimination of nuclear weapons, may it serve as a reminder that the use of nuclear weapons is reprehensible and cannot be justified and is against the basic tenets of humanity. I thank you all for your attention. I thank the President of the Republic of Kenya for his statement. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa, to make a statement. Mr. President, for as long as nuclear weapons exist, humankind will continue to face the threat of catastrophe. It is impossible to imagine that there could be any acceptable justification within established international norms for the continued existence of nuclear weapons, much less for their use. The International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons must remind the international community of its unfulfilled commitments to eliminate nuclear weapons. As we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and the 50th anniversary of the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, it is an anomaly that more than 14,000 nuclear weapons remain in existence. The Non-Proliferation Treaty is historic. The nuclear weapon states undertook to eliminate their nuclear weapons and the non-nuclear weapon states reciprocated by undertaking not to pursue the acquisition of nuclear weapons. A selective focus on non-proliferation measures and the lack of progress on nuclear disarmament undermine this bargain. As the only country that has voluntarily abandoned nuclear weapons. South Africa remains deeply concerned that the nuclear disarmament obligations under Article 6 of the Non-Proliferation Treaty remain unfulfilled. Like other member states, South Africa is concerned about the humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons as aptly outlined in the groundbreaking treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons signed in 2017. We hope that this treaty will serve as a catalyst for progress in the disarmament pillar of the non-proliferation treaty. We reaffirm the right of states to the peaceful use of nuclear energy and applications 
which have the potential to contribute towards sustainable economic development. South Africa attaches great importance and appreciates the work of the International Atomic Energy Agency towards addressing development challenges in several economies, particularly in the area of food security, human and animal health, as well as energy. The only guarantee we have that nuclear weapons will never be used is their total elimination and the legally binding assurance that they will never again be produced. South Africa wishes to reiterate its commitment to multilateralism and the centrality of the United Nations in solving today's challenges. We stand ready to work with all member states towards the achievement of a world without nuclear weapons. I thank you. I thank the President of the Republic of South Africa for his statement. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. George Manchwea, President of the Republic of Liberia, to make a statement. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Liberia is honored to participate in this high level plenary of the General Assembly on the occasion of the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons, especially at the time when the United Nations are invested so much in global security and continues to have the responsibility to protect our war against nuclear disaster. In this context, I would like to express my appreciation for the inspiring leadership of the President of the General Assembly and the Secretary General. Liberia further supports the concept and idea of nuclear non-proliferation. In this regard, I wish to highlight the following perspective. Nuclear weapons remain the most destructive amendments ever created, and they possess very devastating capabilities. These capabilities continue to be modernized and developed with deep implications for the survival of humankind. Any achievements made by mankind on the Sustainable Development Goals can be rendered useless by even a single nuclear incident. It is therefore necessary that we work towards the eliminations of any such responsibility. And this is why Liberia was proud to join other countries in signing the humanitarian pledge against the use of nuclear weapons. The use of threat of the use of nuclear weapons presents our war with its most serious dilemma. Our collective will to act against that threat must therefore be firm and unwavering. Liberia reaffirms that the total elimination of nuclear weapons is the only guarantee against their proliferation, use, or threats of use. Therefore, the so-called step-by-step -step approach to nuclear disarmament requires serious reconsideration. And then further suggestion steps 
in the area of nuclear non-proliferation that we entails further commitments by the non-nuclear weapons states must be linked to a clear time frame for the total elimination of such weapons. We share the responsibility to prevent the use of nuclear weapons and their proliferations. And we must strive to achieve full disarmament through fulfilling the objectives of the Nuclear Proliferations Treaty. The time has come for us to stigmatize and denounce nuclear weapons and the role of nuclear weapons in military doctrines and policy rhetoric of the nuclear weapon states. We also reiterate our concerns regarding arguments we set preconditions for the implementations of existing nuclear disarmament obligations. Liberia shared the concern of many member states that awareness of the impact of nuclear weapons must underpin all approaches and efforts towards nuclear disarmament. We welcome the renewed commitment of the international community together with the International Committee of the Red Cross and other international humanitarian organizations to address the humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons. By raising awareness about this issue, Civil society has a crucial role to play, along with governments, as we fulfill our responsibility. We owe it to future generations to work together to do just that, and in so doing, to rid our world of the threat posed by nuclear weapons. Indeed, Liberia is committed to the peaceful use of nuclear energy. However, we believe our support for the total elimination of nuclear weapons reflects an urgent and reasonable priority in the search for universal peace and security. We will not in all at our peril the increasingly chilling and threatening consequences of the use of nuclear weapons. Like many represented in these hollow halls, this real fear has embodied us further to call on all states with nuclear weapons to not only fulfill all their obligations on the non-proliferation treaty, but also to reinvigorate dialogue and serious negotiations and return to a common vision leading towards nuclear disarmament. We do not have to live with the threat of nuclear weapons. We believe that full disarmament is possible. And we know that we can do this, not only for ourselves and for our children, but for the generations yet unborn. I thank you. I thank the President of the Republic of Liberia for his statement. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Josiah Forek Bainamarama, 
Prime Minister and Minister of Itauke, Sugar Industry and Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Fiji, on behalf of the Pacific Small Island Developing States, to make a statement. Mr. President, Excellencies, the Pacific Small Island Developing States, the PSEEDS, the Federated uh, States of Micronesia, Fiji, Kiribati, Nauru, Palau, Papua New Guinea, Republic of Marshall Islands, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu have the honor to present this statement in commemoration and promotion of the International Day Against Nuclear Explosions. We align this statement with the statement submitted by the Permanent Mission of Tuvalu on behalf of the Pacific Islands Forum. We extend our sincere appreciation to the President of the 74th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, His Excellency Tijani Mohamed Bandi of Nigeria, for hosting today's event. Your Excellency, early this month, the world commemorated the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombing of the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. It is a stark reminder of the devastating, indiscriminate, and long-lasting effects of nuclear weapons. We Pacific Small Island Developing States, PSEEDS, have suffered the effects of nuclear testing in the region. More than 300 nuclear tests were carried out in the Pacific from 1946 to 1996 in the atmosphere, underground, and underwater. Our communities living close to ground zero were relocated from their ancestral islands and restricted from using the ocean resources for their livelihoods. And they faced an increase in related health problems. At the end of this nuclear test, radioactive waste and machinery were either buried or dumped into the Pacific Ocean. Today, we still do not know the full impact of these nuclear tests on our environment and communities. But what we do know is that radioactive pollution from past nuclear tests will continue to be present in the ocean and the environment for years to come. Radioactive pollution in our land and ocean have affected the health and livelihoods of our communities. Compensation will never be enough to correct the long-lasting damage to the ocean, the environment, and the generational health problems these tests have caused. We pay tribute to the foresight and efforts of our leaders, civil society, and people who have strived to establish a South Pacific nuclear-free zone and finally put an end to nuclear testing in parts of the Pacific Ocean. We, the Pacific community, consider ourselves the custodians of the vast blue Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean defines who we are. It serves as the foundation of our economies, our environment, and the well-being of our communities. We have a vision that the blue Pacific Ocean will become an ocean of peace and prosperity for our people and the world. Protecting the blue Pacific Ocean is of paramount importance to our future. It can only become an ocean of peace if it is nuclear-free, and the same goes for the wider world. The 2030 SDGs are of huge importance to our communities, to leaving no one behind. Protecting the environment and promoting prosperity are crucial pillars of the SDGs. A Pacific Ocean threatened or con contaminated by nuclear waste and explosions impedes any progress towards achieving the SDGs. In 2018, our leaders established the Bold Declaration on regional security, recognizing that uh, climate change remains the single greatest threat to the livelihoods, security, and well-being of the peoples of the Pacific. Stopping the development of nuclear weapons and eliminating them altogether will free up much needed global resources to assist our vulnerable communities and those around the world in fighting the effects of climate change. The world does not need nuclear weapons. The challenge of nuclear disarmament can only be resolved by a strengthened multilateral system that sets the conditions for transparency, confidence building, and cooperation. 
the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, and the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons are crucial if we are to further the objective of reducing and eliminating nuclear weapons. Today, we PCs say no to nuclear weapons, and uh, we reiterate our commitment to the elimination of nuclear weapons everywhere. We encourage member states to ratify the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, the CTBT, and the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, the TPNW. It is morally right, and we owe it to ourselves and our future generations. We thank you. Ministre, des Ministre de l'Industrie du, du, du Sucre et des Affaires étrangères de la République de Fiji. I thank the Minister of Sugar, uh, Itake and Foreign Affairs uh, of uh, Fiji for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Gaston Brown, Prime Minister and Minister of Finance of Antigua and Barbuda, who is to make a statement. In August 1945, two atomic bombs destroyed the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The immediate death toll was estimated to have been approximately 213,000 people killed, with hundreds of thousands more injured, and great suffering was experienced by many thousands more for decades. In 1946, reeling from the realization of the recent nuclear devastation, the newly formed United Nations, in its very first resolution, the General Assembly established nuclear disarmament as one of its priority areas. 75 years later, in 2020, at this high-level plenary meeting to commemorate and promote International Day for the total elimination of nuclear weapons this goal still eludes the international community. Mr. President, it is clear to the people of Antigua and Barbuda that any assessment of the use of nuclear weapons provides unassailable proof that such weapons cause loss of life and displacement on a catastrophic scale. This destruction also leads to permanent damage to health and the environment an irreparable impediment to socioeconomic development and the social order. This horrific human impact must remain at the forefront of our disarmament efforts because the risk of catastrophic consequences will remain as long as nuclear weapons exist. Further, as Prime Minister of a small island developing state, I am very aware that our strategic location porous marine borders and socioeconomic realities leave us as potential soft threats for nuclear terrorism. We also continue to be concerned about the movement of hazardous waste and radioactive material through our regional sea, the Caribbean Sea. As a result, Antigua and Barbuda has historically been committed to nuclear disarmament as we are aware of the unparalleled harm and destruction that nuclear weapons can pose to humankind. This commitment is in line with the three pillars of the Treaty on Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, the NPT, namely disarmament, non-proliferation, and guarantees of the peaceful use of nuclear energy. My country was proudly in the conference stall as the General Assembly passed the historic treaty for the total prohibition of nuclear weapons, the TPNW, in 2017. This treaty will fill the legal gap that currently exists regarding the prohibition and el elimination of nuclear weapons, including the general regulation and prohibition against possession, use, development, production, stockpiling, and transfer of such weapons. Antigua and Barbuda ratified the treaty in 2019, and I call upon all member states to sign and ratify the TPNW. At the time of this recording, 
we are five ratifications away from the treaty coming into force. Considering the existential threat that nuclear weapons pose and the lack of recent progress towards eliminating these devastating weapons, achieving the entry into force of the TPNW is of the utmost importance. I must also pay homage to the Treaty of Te Latilolco, established over 50 years ago as the first nuclear weapons-free zone, which instituted the Agency for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean, OPANAL. The citizens in our region have long appreciated the value in ensuring nuclear disarmament and will lead by example in this regard and continue to resist any interventions that may compromise this. Mr. President, it is clear that nuclear weapons have no utility in today's world. They are not deterrents, but rather cultivate a state of insecurity and false defensiveness that only increases the chances of proliferation with a devastating impact on all of us, far beyond the parties directly involved in the conflict. It must be noted that with all the evidence available to disavow the use of nuclear weapons, some states refuse to acknowledge this truth. Instead, a new reality is produced that is conducive to narrow and divisive aims. It is a false assumption that national security and global security are not mutually exclusive, particularly regarding nuclear weapons. It is also a false assumption to promote multilateralism and international peace and security while concurrently stockpiling and developing these tools of mass destruction. Furthermore, the current global environment has been turned on its head. At a time when news reports show the Atlantic Ocean dotted with a record number of potentially devastating storms, forest fires are concurrently raging all over the globe. Simultaneously, we are all facing the COVID-19 pandemic that has disrupted every budget, national plan, and strategy of every single UN member state. One area, however, that seems to be unaffected is military spending with billions of dollars dedicated to modernizing nuclear weapons arsenal. There are even media reports of plans to initiate a resumption of nuclear testing. The United Nations must be genuinely united as we face the multiplicity of threats that blanket us all. The last thing we need is to be concerned with the fallout of nuclear detonation. I fear that none of us are equipped. Mr. President, in closing, my country stands with the international community to make a commitment towards a world free of nuclear weapons in the best interests of our common humanity. There are, however, a few points of optimism. The upcoming NPT review conference and the imminent coming into force of the TPNW are opportunities to be more hopeful at the next gathering of this August body in 2021. We must reject the destructive and false narrative of nuclear deterrence and embrace a future free of these devastating weapons. This vital principle was a guiding reason for the establishment of the United Nations 75 years ago. Let us answer the call of multilateralism and work together to further this goal to ensure the future we all want and the future that generations in the future deserve. I thank you. Minister de I thank uh, the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance uh, and Corporate Governance of Antigua and Barbuda for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Don Paramudu Winai, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Thailand, to make a statement. Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to join you today at this high level plenary meeting to commemorate and promote 
the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. Although the COVID-19 pandemic may have forbidden our gathering, we should continue to stand firm and united in our commitment to realizing a world free of nuclear weapons. Since the inception of the Treaty on Prohibition of the Nuclear Weapons in 2017, we have come a long way. We are now very close to reaching the minimum requirement of 50 parties for the treaty to enter into force. So let us keep up this momentum and continue to put in collective efforts both to ratify the treaty and to urge our friends from near and far who have yet to join to do so. It has been 75 years since Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and we all know too well that devastating impact of nuclear weapons. And yet, the world today is by no means facing less danger from nuclear weapons than any time in the past. Therefore, let us always remind ourselves that international security rests not on our capacity to harm an adversary, but on mutual trust forged between nations on faith in a peaceful resolution of disputed conflicts and on multilateral collaboration. It is regrettable that the 10th review conference of the parties to the treaty on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons was postponed to next year due to COVID-19. Thailand thus urges all parties concerned to use the time now available to strengthen efforts to advance nuclear disarmament. Mr. President, all of us here subscribe to the noble aspiration towards a world free of nuclear weapons, and all of us here have been entrusted with the heavy responsibility of realizing this objective. However, for our efforts to be successful, truly meaningful and sustainable, we the governments must reach out to our people, whether through promoting disarmament education or dialogue. Let us all use the occasion of the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons to do so. I thank you. I thank the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Thailand for his statement. I now have the honor of giving the floor to Her Excellency, Ms. Metumbo Nandi Natwa. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation of the Republic of Nabib, Namibia, who is to make a statement. Mr. President, thank you for convening this high-level meeting to commemorate and promote the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons, in which we are happy to participate. Namibia aligned itself with a statement of the African group and the non-aligned women. Namibia is committed to working with other member states to give further impetus for a world free of nuclear weapons and to promote the implementation of the non-proliferation treaties, which remains a cornerstone for nuclear disarmament, non-proliferation, and peaceful use of nuclear energy. As such, full implementation of the nuclear disarmament obligation of the NPT are imperative. On 20 March 2020, Namibia ratified the Treaty on the Prohibition of the Nuclear Weapons, becoming the 31st nation to accede to the landmark 2017 Treaty. We applaud those member states that have ratified the TPNW and urge those that have not yet done so to ratify the treaty. We are concerned at the potentiality catastrophic humanitarian consequences that could ensue from the use and or possession of the weapons of mass destruction. Their continued existence constitute a clear threat to international peace and security. The only assurance against the use or threat of use of nuclear weapons is through their total elimination. Nuclear weapon states must participate in identifying the effective measures on nuclear disarmament, including legal provisions. We underscore the ethical and moral imperatives for nuclear disarmament, 
and the agents for achieving the maintenance of nuclear weapons free world. Mr. President, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Banner Treaty stands as a pillar of nuclear disarmament which provide, while providing a firm legal basis against the nuclear test and in so doing prevents the development of new types of design of nuclear weapons. We believe that the CTBT is a confidence builder among states and will be much stronger once it becomes a universal treaty. Ratification of the STBT by all nuclear weapon states will demonstrate their will, but more importantly, their responsibility when it comes to the complete ban of nuclear testing. Namibia, being a producer of uranium, underscores the importance for the respect of the ineligible right of peaceful use of nuclear energy. We support the strategic role of the International Autonomy Atomic Energy Agency for the provision of technical assistance and cooperation for the social economic development of the peaceful use of nuclear energy. We stress the importance of nuclear knowledge sharing and the transfer of nuclear technology to developing countries. Namibia notes with appreciation the efforts that have been made by member states in the implementation of the key actions of the Secretary General's Agenda for Disarmament, most notably the, paragraph, the progress in respect to five actions, namely 9, 11, 13, 18, and 19. We thank the member states and the regional organizations that they've stepped forward as champions and supporters to play an active leadership role in any of the activities in support of a given action, including through political or financial commitments or through active engagement. We need more efforts in ensuring equal, full and effective participation of women in this armament process. As we enter the decade of action, we call for more state champions to support the implementation of action of the agenda, especially in the cluster of, I quote, strengthening the partnership for disarmament, end of quote, as well as disarmament and sustainable development goals which are lagging behind. Namibia notes with satisfaction the increased youth engagement on disarmament, and we encourage member states to promote gender equality in their efforts to integrate disarmament and development. Mr. President, in conclusion, Namibia remains committed to inclusive discussions on the goals and objectives of the PNPT, including the provisions a great outcome of its review conference. We look forward to the 10th review conference in 2021. We support the work done by the president designate of the NPT review conference and his efforts to continue the conversation going throughout these difficult circumstances, which is uh, made due to COVID-19 pandemic. It is our hope that the 2021 review conference will provide the opportunity to make a genuine and meaningful progress on the nuclear disarmament and the non professional agenda in our pursuit for a world without nuclear weapons. I thank you, Mr. Chair. I thank you all for your attention. I thank the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation of the Republic of Namibia for her statement. I now have the honour to give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Pam Binh Minh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Vietnam, to make a statement.
Mr. President, 75 years ago, the world saw the end of the Second World War, but not before witnessing the devastations caused by atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In efforts to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war and the threat to the survivor of mankind, to foster friendly relations and peaceful coexistence between all states, and to save the finite resources for social and economic development. The first special sections of the United Nations General Assembly on disarmament placed the highest priority on nuclear disarmament and the prevention of nuclear war. Since then, the world has made significant strides. A system of multilateral and bilateral frameworks for nuclear disarmament, non-proliferation, and arms control has been built. The global nuclear stockpiles has been reduced by three quarters since the peak of the Cold War. A moratorium on nuclear tests have been implemented by most nuclear weapon states. Five nuclear weapon free zones covering over 100 states have been created, including the Southeast Asian nuclear weapon free zone established by ASEAN in 1995. Yes, the prospect of total eliminations of nuclear weapons remain elusive. The current nuclear stockpile possesses enough power to end the world today. Why the risk of spreading nuclear weapons to irresponsible non-state actor remain? Growing tension among nuclear weapon states is putting the global machinery under extreme pressure. Vietnam supports all efforts towards nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation and has become member of all international treaties to this endeavor, including the NPT, the CTPT, and most recently, the Treaty on Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. We call upon the nuclear weapon states to step, step up in their commitment to the obligations to general disarmament under Article 6 of the NPT. Trust in the multilateral disarmament architecture must be re-established. Regional architectures need to play a more expansive role in establishing a, and implementing nuclear weapon free zones in all areas. As the ASEAN chair in 2020, Vietnam remains committed to preserving the Southeast Asian nuclear weapon free zone and will continue to engage with all parties to intensify efforts to resolve outstanding issue in the implementations of the treaty on the Southeast Asian nuclear weapon free zone. Meanwhile, the right of states to use of nuclear energy for peaceful purposes must be respected. On this International Day for the Total Eliminations of Nuclear Weapons, we must all reaffirm the legal and moral duty to achieve the goal of a nuclear weapon free world. Let us unite in realizing this promise for a future of peace, security, and prosperity. I thank you. I thank the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Vietnam for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Louis Stracker Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to make a statement. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the catastrophic humanitarian and environmental consequences of nuclear weapons are regrettably well documented and have left an indelible mark on the international community. While the global number of nuclear weapons has significantly decreased, the existence of these weapons of mass destruction undoubtedly constitutes a threat to international peace and security. 
as the world grapples with a pandemic of historic proportions, global anxiety is further heightened by the risk of nuclear warfare. Geopolitical tensions are rapidly escalating, and persistent efforts are being made towards the modernization of nuclear arsenals. The prioritization of economic and military self-interest continues to fragment multilateralism and paralyze efforts aimed at achieving consensus on a common vision and path towards complete, verifiable, and irreversible denuclearization. Multilateral cooperation is critical in order to effectively address legitimate security concerns, and nuclear weapon states ought to engage in in-depth and constructive dialogue concerning their various nuclear doctrines. This is key to building confidence, improving transparency, safeguarding peace and security, and to make certain that the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is realized. The Non-Proliferation Treaty remains the cornerstone of the global non-proliferation regime. Subsequent treaties and agreements, in particular, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, to which St. Vincent and the Grenadines became the 24th State Party in July 2019, and the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action have made significant contributions in curbing the proliferation of nuclear weapons and preventing the diversion of nuclear energy from peaceful uses. We remain in support of these essential instruments, and we recognize the indispensable roles and the valuable contributions of the International Atomic Energy Agency and the Agency for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean in this regard. Excellencies, only through the total elimination of nuclear weapons can the international community be assured that the horrifying events of 1945 will never be unintentionally or deliberately repeated. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as a member of the first nuclear weapons-free zone in a densely populated area, and the community of Latin America and the Caribbean, zone of uh, peace, is committed to the attainment of a world free from nuclear weapons. A nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. We must recommit to reinforcing and preserving the norm against the use of nuclear weapons. We must refrain from embarking on steps which are antithetical to the principles on which the United Nations still stands 75 years since its founding. We must all act in the common interests of humankind. I thank you for listening. I thank the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for his statement. I now give the floor to Her Excellency Ms. Retno L.P. Marsudi, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, to make a statement. Mr. President, this year marks the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and the 50th year of the NPT. However, we are still far away from achieving one of the initial goals of the UN, total elimination of nuclear weapons. No significant progress has been made by the possessor states in eliminating their nuclear arsenals. Instead, the doctrine of nuclear deterrence still exists, along with modernization of nuclear weapons and collapsing disarmament framework, resulting in the ever-enlarging trust deficit among countries. Therefore, today's event must be impactful to deliver concerted effort in achieving a world free from nuclear weapons and to contribute further in enhancing cooperation on the peaceful uses of nuclear technology including to fight against COVID-19. I wish to underline three important points. First, 
the NPT needs to be preserved and enforced. Equal progress on the three pillars of the NPT is crucial, including the obligation by all nuclear weapon states to enhance the disarmament agenda. Second, relevant disarmament machineries and architectures must be strengthened. The conference of disarmament must live up to its mandates. Early entry into force and universalization of the CTBT and TPNW and accession by all nuclear weapon states to nuclear weapons free zone treaties must be pursued. Along with armed control agreements between nuclear weapon states to complement the disarmament agenda. Lastly, nuclear disarmament should provide concrete dividends for global prosperity. The COVID-19 should remind us that protecting humanity cannot be accomplished through nuclear weapons, but through global solidarity. Excellencies, maintaining nuclear weapons is clearly a zero-sum situation. While total abolition of such weapon will ensure that humanity prevail. Thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Indonesia for her statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Jorge Ariatha Montserrat. Minister of the People's Power for Foreign Affairs of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela to make a statement. Excellencies. Excellencies, I wish to begin by stating that the uh, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela is fully aligned uh, with the statement of uh, the countries of the non-aligned movement. I take this opportunity to reiterate the national principle position of the Bolivarian government on the need to completely eliminate nuclear weapons as a basis of our diplomacy of peace and our firm commitment to promote and build a safer, more peaceful world. Achieving this objective depends on the unanimous political will of all states, but particularly of nuclear weapons holding states. They without any further delay, must adopt effective measures directed to general, complete, and non-discriminatory disarmament without any double standards. Venezuela has always condemned the production, stockpiling, use, and threat of use of weapons of mass destruction, including, of course, nuclear weapons. The only guarantee against the threat or the use of nuclear weapons is their complete elimination we call for the immediate cessation of plans to modernize, uh, qualitatively perfect, develop, produce, and stockpile nuclear warheads and their delivery systems. We express our deep concern at the prospect of a new nuclear arms race, including the use of outer space for their deployment. This is evidence of uh, the derogation of mutually agreed upon international treaties to limit and reduce nuclear weapons between the main nuclear weapons states. The collapse of these agreements, the increase of nuclear spending, show the unacceptable regression that is taking place in this area. These deployments prove that we are far from the peace and security that these weapons, in theory, are supposed to provide. Likewise, we wish to make it very clear that strategic doctrines and security policies based on the holding of nuclear weapons as deterrents ignore the call of the peoples of the world for the complete elimination of these evil weapons because of their immensely destructive nature and the catastrophic consequences they generate. Proof that, unfortunately, the interests of a very small group of states have prevailed over the interests of humanity. We know that the United States of America use every means within their grasp to intervene in the domestic affairs of peoples 
and continually affect the internal peace and international peace. Multilateralism and the diplomacy of peace must prevent the warmongering supremacist ambitions of Washington from uh, risking life on our planet. No more nuclear weapons, no more weapons of mass destruction. Let us act firmly for humanity. We reiterate our commitment to peace and democracy as the only way of solving our differences. We recall that ECLAC, uh, the community of states of Latin America and the Caribbean, declared our region a region of peace. Once again, we call for security doctrines not to be used against the liberty of the free peoples of the world. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister of the People's Power for Foreign Affairs of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Chingiz Adabekov, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kyrgyzstan, to make a statement. President, ladies and gentlemen, Today we commemorate the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. Over the previous 50 years, the international community has made significant progress in creating the bases for a safer world. This has been possible thanks to a range of multilateral and bilateral agreements on arms control and disarmament. As never before, marking this day is very timely against the background of the degradation of the arms control structure. Under these circumstances, it's important to strengthen approaches to nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. Kyrgyzstan here emphasizes the central role, importance and significance of the UN as a multilateral mechanism in disarmament. President, commitment to a policy of disarmament and preventing non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction is one of the main principles of Kyrgyz foreign policy. We are parties to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, and we are members of the International Atomic Energy Agency. As active advocates of a world free of nuclear weapons, Kyrgyzstan has become one of the initiators and depositories of the Treaty on a Zone Free of Nuclear Weapons in Central Asia. As country coordinator, for the Central Asian Nuclear Weapons Free Zone this year, we are making every effort to ensure that in 2021 we can mark the 15th anniversary of the signing of the treaty in a proper fashion. Our region is now a clear example of how a nuclear free zone can help strengthen regional and global nuclear safety and the peaceful use of nuclear energy. The Kyrgyz Republic therefore welcomes the ratification by the United Kingdom, China, Russia and China of a protocol on negative security agencies to the Treaty on the Nuclear Weapons Free Zone in Central Asia. We call on the United States to ratify this document without delay. I'd like to share with you that during the 75th session of the UN General Assembly, the Central Asian countries will propose an updated resolution on the zone free of nuclear weapons in Central Asia, and we encourage all states to support this resolution. We should note that the special feature of the Treaty on the Nuclear Weapons Free Zone in Central Asia is its environmental focus, encouraging efforts to repair the environmental damage done by the mining of uranium resources in previous years. The Kyrgyz Republic therefore attaches particular attention to the revegetation of uranium tailing pools. At the 68th and 73rd sessions of the UN General Assembly, Kyrgyzstan initiated a resolution on the role of the international community in the prevention of the radiation threat in Central Asia. That resolution was adopted, and it notes the importance of revegetating regions affected by uranium production and recognizes the need for effective programs to ensure that radio radioactive and toxic waste can be properly managed. I'd also like to stress the important role here of education in training the future generation of capable specialists and experts on disarmament and non-proliferation. We need to also recognise the important contribution that can be made here by civil society, including non-governmental organisations, academia 
and the media. President, the COVID-19 pandemic is an unprecedented challenge, but it also gives us a unique opportunity to set aside disagreements of the past and to together fight the threat to the existence of any living thing on the planet that is represented by nuclear weapons. The Kyrgyz Republic believes that the adoption of quick action is our collective responsibility. We encourage all here present to take such action without delay. I thank you. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kyrgyzstan for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Rodolfo Serrano Quiros, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Costa Rica, to make a statement. Señor Presidente. President, every minute a total of 138,699 dollars is spent on the production and modernization of nuclear weapons. According to the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, or ICANN, in 2019, the nine nuclear states spent 72.9 billion on maintaining their more than 13,000 nuclear weapons, an increase of 7.1 billion from 2018. In a world of finite resources, these figures are immoral and unacceptable. If only a fraction of these resources were used to combat the pandemic, our generation could proudly say that it knew how to redefine its priorities when circumstances so required. For this reason, Costa Rica urges governments and peoples to take up the task set out in Article 26 of the Charter of the United Nations to develop a collective security system that can lead to a reduction in military spending and the eventual elimination of the production and possession of nuclear weapons. Article 26 should be our mantra as we seek the necessary resources to eradicate the pandemic and achieve the most ambitious and comprehensive human development program ever conceived, the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. To commemorate this day, Costa Rica calls for a renewed commitment to multilateralism and urges that we respect the Charter of the United Nations and international law without exceptions. Our solemn obligation is to ensure that principles are consistently applied and defended on universal truths. When these principles are trampled on, ignored, or selectively applied without consequences, it weakens the organization and the international system of governance that we established after the Second World War. That selective approach weakens our system of collective security, and that same selective approach is what led nuclear weapons states to modernize their obsolete arsenals, replacing them with more sophisticated and therefore more le lethal weapons, and continuing nuclear escalation. That same selective approach leads states to ignore or threaten to ignore their obligations under the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, or the NPT, while demanding that other states comply with them. As appropriately said by Carlos Alvarado, President of the Republic of Costa Rica, and I quote, there are no safe hands for the wrong weapons, weapons that will ultimately be outlawed with the prompt and entry into force of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which is a triumph for multilateralism, just when multilateralism is going through moments of great uncertainty. This is the first step uh, towards ensuring that nuclear weapons and their unacceptable humanitarian consequences are prohibited and then eliminated." End quote. This path has already begun years ago with other weapons of mass destruction, biological and chemical, going down it. We have done so because a considerable majority of the membership of this organization believes that nuclear weapons are contrary 
to the instinct of our species to survive. I therefore call on all states that have not yet done so to sign and ratify this historical instrument of humanitarian disarmament. Mr. President, the time has come to work for a world where the only most powerful world that states have is international law. The time has come to give peace a chance through multilateralism. Thank you. I thank the Foreign Minister of Costa Rica for his statement. And I give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Francisco Bustillo, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uruguay, to make a statement. Uruguay is, Uruguay is a country with a long tradition of respect and defense of the principles and purposes of the Charter of the United Nations, international law, and the rule of law. As a non-nuclear weapon state, Uruguay is strongly committed to strengthening the, reg the disarmament re and non-proliferation regime. We believe that, the, uh, that appropriate, effective multilateral instruments are the only way to achieve general complete disarmament with strict adherence to the international regime. Uruguay is a party to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons and has been one since 1970. This instrument is a keystone of the nuclear disarmament regime. Since 2018, we have been party to the Nuclear Weapons Prohibition Treaty. Nu Uruguay is also a party to the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean, or the Tlatelolco Treaty. This created the first uh, nuclear weapons free zone in a densely populated territory and was a source of inspiration for the establishment of similar areas in other geographic regions. As proof of our commitment uh, for 2018-2021, Uruguay is a member of the Council of the Organization for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean, or OPANAL. In an increasingly unstable, unpredictable international system, we wish to express uh, to the General Assembly this morning, our deep concern at the catastrophic humanitarian consequences that the use of nuclear weapons has. They are a risk to the security and survival of humanity. For this reason, we support the call of the Secretary General and his commitment to make full elimination of nuclear weapons a priority. Noting a standstill in compliance with the obligations established in the Treaty on uh, Nuclear Nonproliferation, we call on the state's parties to uh, this instrument to redouble their efforts uh, to reduce their arsenals and states which are not parties to this uh, treaty to become involved in this exercise of risk collective responsibility. Uruguay is concerned that the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty has not yet entered into force. We call to, on those states whose ratification is needed for its entry into force to do so without any further delay. Uruguay recognizes the importance of the application of the three fundamental pillars of the Treaty on non, uh, uh, non Nuclear Non-Proliferation, Nuclear Disarmament, Non-Proliferation, and the peaceful use of nuclear energy. With regard to this last pillar, we must consider that the use of nuclear energy can be channeled to respond to the current challenges such as climate change and the promotion of sustainable development. In this area, Uruguay wishes to ex express once again its full support to the role and the work of the IAEA. The Conference on the Parties of the Review uh, of the Non-Proliferation Treaty gives us an opportunity which cannot uh, uh, waste uh, to make progress in nuclear disarmament. Uruguay defends and calls for the full, irreversible, verifiable, and transparent elimination of nuclear weapons without preconditions or reservations within a multilaterally agreed upon time frame. The insecurities perceived by states in uh, different geographical regions increases the risk of the use of nuclear weapons. In, uh, in order to prevent this, we must promote transparency and build mutual trust uh, to conclude negotiations in climate of good faith and uh, mutual respect. To conclude, Uruguay calls on the international community to make every effort uh, to reach the objective 
of nuclear disarmament and take significant steps towards a safer, more stable world with a sense of collective purpose. Our very survival depends on this. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uruguay for his statement. I now give the floor to Her Excellency Ms. Anne Lind, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Sweden, to make a statement. 75 years since the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, this meeting comes with a special responsibility to bring remembrance into action. We are reminded of the indisputable fact that nuclear explosions cause catastrophic humanitarian consequences on a scale impossible to comprehend. In spite of this, the nuclear threat is as present as ever and multilateralism is under severe pressure. The international security environment is increasingly characterized by polarization and the lack of trust. This is a dangerous mix, one which we cannot afford to ignore. Sweden's position is clear. The only guarantee that nuclear weapons will never be used again is their total elimination. And the only way to achieve this goal is to work together across borders. We are at a critical juncture. Next year, the Thent Review Conference of the Non-Proliferation Treaty will finally take place. All state parties have committed themselves to the total elimination of nuclear weapons, a commitment that has to be brought into practical measures. Nuclear weapon states have a special responsibility. We call on the United States and Russia to promptly extend a new start, a treaty critical for global security. We welcome recent discussions on a broader follow-on agreement which could also include China. The inclusion of non-strategic weapons in such an agreement would be of particular importance. Sweden is pursuing efforts in several areas. We have launched the Stockholm Initiative on Nuclear Disarmament with a diverse group of 15 other non-nuclear weapon states. The aim is to build political support for a result-oriented disarmament agenda with the MPT framework. We invite you to join us in this endeavor and align with our proposal for stepping stones, including minimizing the risk of conflict and accidental nuclear weapon use, diminishing the role of nuclear weapons in security policies and doctrine, and enhancing nuclear disarmament verification. Promoting disarmament education and ensuring the full and effective participation of women in nuclear disarmament are other elements. There can be no valid excuse for further delaying signing and ratifying the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, CTBT, an integral part of the international disarmament and non-proliferation regime. As chair of the IAEA Board of Governors, Sweden has worked for a recommitment to the rule-based international order. We support efforts to preserve the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, ECPOA, crucial for regional and international security. We call on Iran to return to full implementation of its undertakings under the Plan of Action. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea must adhere to its international obligations and take steps towards denuclearization. The upcoming MPT review conference must make a true difference. We are ready to do our part. Thank you. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Sweden for her statement. I now have the honor of giving the floor to His Excellency Lisandro Rosales, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Honduras, who is to make a statement. The pandemic triggered by COVID-19 once again has brought the need for joint action to the international stage. 
The Charter of the United Nations in its first lines speaks of our determination as peoples of these United Nations to save future generations from the scourge of war, putting our strength together. We have done so with the Sustainable Development Goals and previously with the Millennium Development Goals. We have stressed this on the front of climate change, which is increasingly apocalyptic. We have set timelines and set aside the resources and the necessary responsibilities to achieve our goals. But if there is anything we should focus on achieving as nations, it is eliminating the possibility of disappearing as a civilization. Year after year, we meet uh, on the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. The idea is to commemorate and promote the elimination of nuclear weapons. But the truth is that the only thing that we can commemorate is the intention, not the results. The true meaning of this meeting is the promotion of the abolition of these weapons, which, which, which push humanity to the brink of extinction. Of course, we advocate the suppression and the banning of all nuclear tests and the elimination of weapons of mass destruction through multilateral negotiations. We are signatories to the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean. We are also parties uh, to the Treaty, uh, the Comprehensive uh, Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. The Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons is uh, today in its final phase of ratification by our National Congress. The United Nations Organization warned recently that the threat of use of nuclear weapons means the beginning of a new arms race. This is a threat which concerns all of humanity. Also, signatory countries which have technology must refrain from transferring weapons to other nations, and countries without those weapons must renounce their development or obtain oh, or acquisition. Unfortunately, there has been dissonance in this cons uh, concert of nations. Disarmament is for everyone, and no country must remain armed with its nuclear ar uh, arsenal because of its destabilizing nature is a permanent threat to peace and our future. Mr. Secretary General, you have our full support uh, for the elimination of nuclear weapons. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Honduras for his statement. I have the honor of giving the floor to His Excellency Mr. Sameh Shukri, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Egypt, to make a statement. President, this year we are commemorating the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. However, we did not fulfill the goal of elim eliminating nuclear weapons from national armaments as set forth by the very first resolution adopted by the UN General Assembly. In this context, Egypt finds it regrettable to witness minimal progress in nuclear disarmament. It is even more disconcerting that certain states continue to expend a considerable portion of their resources not only on maintaining but on expanding their nuclear weapons arsenal as well. Moreover, it is disturbing that these states possess nuclear weapons with a collective explosive yield that threatens the sustainability of life on our planet. By the same token, Egypt reaffirms that the total verifiable and irreversible elimination of nuclear weapons is the only guarantor against their proliferation, use or threat of use. The time has come for the unconditional and unambiguous denunciation of nuclear weapons. Mr. President, Egypt is discouraged to note incipient conceptual approaches that set preconditions to achieve nuclear disarmament. We reiterate in this regard that the path to nuclear disarmament must be unconditional. Additionally, nuclear disarmament cannot be sustained by transient measures aimed at reducing nuclear risk. Mr. President, Egypt looks forward to the success of the 10th Review Conference of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. 
In this vein, I would like to draw your attention to the statement Egypt issued jointly with 16 like-minded states in May 2020, 50 years after the entry into force of the NPT. Egypt reiterates that failure to universalize the NPT, together with a decades-long stalemate in the implementation of the 1995 Middle East Resolution, is significantly eroding the credibility and sustainability of the disarmament and non-proliferation regimes and multilateral norms. Egypt emphasizes that the success of the NPT is closely linked to its ability to adopt a balanced outcome document that reaffirms past commitments and provides for its implementation in a timely manner, especially with regards to the implementation of the 1995 resolution on the establishment of a Middle East zone free of weapons of mass destruction, a cornerstone of the indefinite extension of the NPT. On a brighter note, Egypt wishes to highlight the convening of the first session of the UN conference to establish a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction held in 2019 under the presidency of Jordan and the adoption of a political declaration and its final report. Egypt believes that this consensual-based process could significantly contribute to strengthening the international nuclear disarmament regime and accelerate reaching a nuclear weapons-free world. We look forward to the support of the international community to this process as, it, as its participants prepare for its second session held under the presidency of Kuwait. In conclusion, Egypt strongly believes that the goal of global zero is not only attainable, but is also necessary to achieve sustainable peace and development. We are looking forward for a day when the UN is able to commemorate the occasion of ridding the world of nuclear weapons. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Egypt for his statement. I now have the honor of giving the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Mario Lopez Chavarri, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Peru, to make a statement. Mr. President, since its creation, in which Peru participated 75 years ago, the United Nations has had nuclear disarmament as one of its goals. The elimination of nuclear weapons uh, was the subject of the first resolution this General Assembly adopted just a few months after the tragedy and the horror of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. International instruments ad adopted uh, throughout the decades held a nuclear hope, leading us towards disarmament and uh, the peaceful use of nuclear energy, such as the Atoms for Peace Initiative, which gave way to the IAEA. However, nuclear disarmament continues to be a goal to reach. Even more seriously, nuclear disarmament is stalemated. A number of countries are wasting resources on programs to produce, maintain, and modernize nuclear weapons. Their security policies continue to be doctrines of nuclear deterrence, feeding those decisions. Today, more than half of the world population live in countries who have nuclear weapons or are part of nuclear alliances. Despite the catastrophic consequences of using just one nuclear weapon, there are still 17,000 of them throughout the world. In recent years, no nuclear weapons have been destroyed by any bilateral or multilateral treaties. On the contrary, violations and challenges to the regimes of nuclear and non-proliferation have turned uh, nuclear weapons once again into the greatest threat to peace and collective security in today's world. Let us recall the um, advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice in 1996, which considered the threat or uh, use of these weapons as a crime against humanity and a severe violation of uh, international law, including international humanitarian law. President, the effects of the pandemic and its lethality to health, society, and the economy have exposed our vulnerabilities as well as the need to closely cooperate and to respond in a coordinated fashion. It also calls on us to review the other international threats, such as the one which brings us together today and which calls for a multilateral commitment 
to emerge from it through the institutional architecture created to this end, the most complete expression of which is the United Nations. Peru maintains its firm position for the full application of the three pillars of the NPT, prevention of the acquisition of weapons by new states, uh, cooperation in uh, the nuclear area for p peaceful purposes, and uh, complete nuclear disarmament. Also, Peru's international commitment has extended with the signing of uh, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Its binding nature strengthens the disarmament re and nonproliferation regime and is the implementation of Article 6 of the NPT, to which we as so we aspire for everybody to adhere to it. Mr. President, Peru reiterates its willingness and commitment to, to take all necessary steps and support the initiatives to implement legally binding obligations not to possess and to eliminate nuclear weapons as quickly as possible throughout the world. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Peru for his statement. I now have the honor of giving the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Marcelo Ebrard, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mexico, to make a statement. First, I would like to thank you for inviting Mexico to this important meeting, which focuses on one of the major concerns of our generation, the proliferation of nuclear weapons in the world. Of course, you are aware that Mexico, uh, through the Tlatelolco Treaty, strongly promoted our building a region in Latin America which is completely free from nuclear weapons, nuclear tests, and the development of nuclear weapons, which endanger our societies. And since then, Mexico has uh, continued uh, with this tradition and this commitment. Why is the issue so important today? We are in the context of the General Assembly of the United Nations and responding to the devastating pandemic of COVID-19. It is important, first of all, because nuclear development focuses a large amount of resources which are needed to respond to the health priorities. Nuclear, uh, the, the nuclear arms race and development of nuclear weapons is one of the areas uh, which is most costly in the development of weapons. The more proliferation of nuclear weapons, the fewer resources there are available in the world to respond to the inequality we have in access to health care and also to research on the new on new viruses, to mutations, to microorganisms that we have to be vigilant about. Uh, and uh, the world invests more in weapons in general than in scientific uh, research, which we should have to protect humanity from these changes, mutations, and new viruses that we will have to face. If this was not reason enough, we have to take into account the risk for our societies as well. Every, develop, uh, every country developing this kind of weapons endangers itself, its neighbors, and other regions of the world. If we want to build a world where we can guarantee peace, we must necessarily prohibit nuclear weapons. For Mexico, this is a precondition, a sine qua non, and for this reason, we are passionate about participating with you in conveying this message, this position, for the future of what is coming after the pandemic. We want a different world, not to go back to the world we had a year ago. We will have serious and negative effects, poverty, inequality, but we will also have potential, new potential which we probably did not have before the pandemic. Part of this potential, these possibilities, is what we are talking about, designing a new kind of worldwide balance, 
prohibiting and eradicating nuclear weapons in this world. This is what Mexico wishes to share today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mexico for his statement. And I'll give the floor to the representative of Cuba to introduce a statement by their minister. Gracias, señor president. Thank you, President. I have the honor of introducing the recorded statement of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Cuba, Bruno Rodriguez Parilla. Señor Secretario Mr. Secretary General, Mr. President, distinguished delegates, it is appalling to realize that 75 years after the criminal bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there are approximately 13,400 nuclear weapons, of which nearly 1,800 are on operational alert and 3,720 already have been deployed. More than half of these weapons belong to the United States, the country which has the largest number of these weapons ready to be used and the only one in the world that has dropped two atomic bombs. The international community cannot remain impassive in the face of uh, uh, the review of the United States, uh, of the nu its nuclear posture, which lowers the threshold of resorting to this kind of weapons, even in respond response to so-called non-nuclear strategic threats. We reject the decision of the U.S. government to withdraw from the Iran nuclear treaty and the short and medium-range missiles treaty signed with the former Soviet Union. These are unilateral actions with grave consequences for international stability and security. We urge the United States to ratify the Treaty on the Reduction and Limitation of Strategic Offensive Arms or start with Russia. We condemn the U.S. attempts to restore the Monroe Doctrine in contravention of international law and the proclamation of Latin America and the Caribbean as a zone of peace. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic has evidenced the fragility of a world where there is no guaranteed access to universal basic health services, while nuclear arsenals continue to be modernized and expanded, using as a pretext defense and security military concepts and doctrines that continue to threaten humanity. The total elimination of nuclear weapons should be the top priority in the area of disarmament. Nuclear energy should be used only for peaceful purposes. In support of the social and economic development of all states without any distinction or discrimination, we reiterate our call to ratify the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Cuba is proud of having been the fifth state to ratify that instrument. We are proud of being part of the first nuclear weapon-free zone in a densely populated area of the planet. We are proud of belonging to the first region of the world proclaiming itself as a zone of peace and of being an active member of the movement of non-aligned countries, which promoted the commemoration of the International Day for the total elimination of nuclear weapons. As was expressed by Fidel Castro Ruz, the commander-in-chief of the Cuban Revolution, and I quote, bombs may kill the hungry, the sick, and the ignorant, but bombs cannot kill hunger, disease, and ignorance, end of quote. We deserve a world of peace, free from nuclear weapons. Let us fight for this world. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Cuba for his statement, and I have the honor of giving the floor to His Excellency Mr. Alexander Schallenberg, 
Federal Minister for European and International Affairs of Austria. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, today's ceremony marking the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons takes place under extraordinary circumstances. The global pandemic continues to severely affect our work and our daily lives. However, while the fight against COVID-19 has overshadowed everything else, the crisis and security threats around the world have not disappeared. Quite on the contrary, it would seem that the pandemic is actually fueling the fire of existing geopolitical conflicts. As Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, the warning lights are flashing. 75 years ago, atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, causing horrendous death and destruction. One would have hoped that we would learn from history, but it seems we haven't really done so. Today, 75 years later, we have to acknowledge that we are still not safe from the devastating humanitarian consequences caused by these weapons. It is actually depressing that we have to mark this anniversary in a world where nuclear weapons still exist. And what makes things worse, the threat of a nuclear confrontation has actually increased when nuclear arsenals are being upgraded and new delivery systems are being developed. In this context, we welcome the strategic stability talks between the United States and Russia and Vienna. We hope that they will lead to an extension of the New START Treaty, as well as to negotiations for a more ambitious and inclusive successor agreement. We also call on all other nuclear armed states to take the disarmament obligations very seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, by now it is clear that the so-called advantages of nuclear weapons simply do not exist. Nuclear deterrence does not increase security. Let's finally lay this myth to rest. As long as they exist, these weapons will remain a constant threat to peace and security for all nations. At the same time, the risk of escalation and miscalculation is growing. Cyber attacks, hybrid threats, hypersonic missiles, and the instrumentalization of disinformation are reducing the available time for deliberate action. What does this mean for us? It means that we have to redouble our efforts. Three years ago, 122 states have voted for the adoption of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. 84 countries have signed the treaty and the momentum is accelerating. Every additional signature and every additional ratification sends a clear message. Right now, we are only a few ratifications away from the entry into force of this treaty. Once we have reached the threshold, I look forward to the first meeting of states' parties at the UN in Vienna. Until then, I want to encourage each of you to keep up the pressure in our common endeavor to free the world from all nuclear weapons. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, I can assure you that Austria will continue to be actively engaged in building a world free of nuclear weapons, for two simple reasons. To pay tribute to the countless victims of the past and to ensure a peaceful future for generations to come. Thank you for your attention. I thank the Federal Minister for European and International Affairs of Austria for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Simon Coveney, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ireland, to make a statement. President, this year we mark the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the only occasion when nuclear weapons have been used in war. As we remember the victims and honour the survivors, we reaffirm our unwavering commitment to global nuclear disarmament. I am proud that on the 6th of August this year, the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima, Ireland ratified the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Ireland's ratification of the Treaty on the Pro Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons reflects our deep concern about the catastrophic consequences of a nuclear explosion and the sheer impossibility of any adequate humanitarian response. Nuclear disarmament has long been a signature feature of Irish foreign policy. Ireland played a significant role in the origins of the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, which remains the cornerstone of the nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation infrastructure. This year we celebrate 
its 50th anniversary. Implementation of the disarmament pillar of the NPT has been far too slow. The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons gives some much needed impetus. It is fully compatible with the NPT and provides a tangible pathway for states to meet their disarmament obligations. President, we live in challenging times when many international disarmament and arms control agreements are being undermined. The prospect of a new arms race is very real. Nuclear modernization programs are absorbing vast resources. Geopolitical tensions are rising. The threat of proliferation remains. Some say this means the time is not right for nuclear disarmament. They are wrong. A range of crises, including the current pandemic, have shown that arsenals of nuclear weapons afford no security or safety. The world is also completely ill-equipped to deal with the consequences of a nuclear weapon detonation, whether by accident, miscalculation or design. The only guarantee of safety from nuclear weapons is their total elimination. This is what Ireland will continue to work for. Thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ireland for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Fouad Hussein, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Iraq, to make a statement. Mr. President of the General Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, the delegation of Iraq would like to congratulate you sincerely on your election as President of the General Assembly of the United Nations during its 75th session. We express to you all our support for all your efforts to make our meeting a success. We also would like to sincerely thank all parties that have worked diligently to convene this high-level meeting to commemorate and promote the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. This meeting is an occasion to highlight the risks and disastrous consequences that may result from some parties' uh, potential use of nuclear weapons. The effective participation in this uh, meeting is a show of the wide support from member states for the urgency of the total elimination of nuclear weapons. In this regard, we would like to align ourselves with the statements of the Arab, Arab group and the non-allied movement in this context. Mr. President, at a time when Iraq warns against the destruction that cannot be predicted because of a potential use of nuclear weapons uh, for both person and planet, we reiterate the need to continue with international efforts in order to achieve universality of all instruments relevant to non-proliferation and uh, disarmament. This is the only guarantee for the non-use of uh, nuclear weapons and any other weapon of mass destruction. Mr. President, the government of Iraq has continued to support all national and international efforts aimed at non-proliferation. And based on uh, Article 9E of the Iraqi Constitution, which stipulates the need to respect international obligations in the field of uh, non-proliferation of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction, to achieve a world free of nuclear weapons, we have taken several measures in this regard. These include supporting the uh, resolution on the Treaty of, uh, the, for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in July 2017. We have also joined the co-sponsors of uh, resolutions on the humanitarian impact of uh, the use of nuclear weapons. Iraq is also seeking to join the uh, Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty because we believe that this will promote the international regime for non-proliferation. Through our uh, joint uh, chairmanship with the Kingdom of Belgium over the conference on Article 14 of the CTBT during 
2017, 20, 20, 2019, uh, we have engaged in multiple consultations and exerted great efforts for the remaining eight states of Annex II to join the treaty for it to enter into effect. Accordingly, Iraq's efforts reflect our firm belief and commitment to all treaties and instruments relevant to disarmament and non-proliferation. Mr. President, Iraq reiterates the need to establish a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. We emphasize the need to prepare for such establishment through practical measures, most important of which is for the Israeli entity to engage in the nuclear disarmament and join the non-proliferation treaty as a non-nuclear party. Israel must accept to subject its nuclear facilities to the comprehensive safeguard system of the International Atomic Energy Agency. In addition, they should participate in round two of the conference on the establishment of a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. In this regard, Iraq commends the efforts to convene a UN conference on for the convention that has taken place of a conference under the Jordanian presidency pursuant to resolution 73 stroke 546 of the General Assembly. We further emphasize that uh, convening the conference will uh, represent a parallel uh, process to support international efforts for the establishment of a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction in a manner that contributes to the maintenance of international peace and security. We look forward to convening the second round of the conference under Kuwait's presidency in 2021. We emphasize our full support to Kuwait in this regard. Mr. President, Iraq is deeply concerned because of the failure of adopting an outcome document during the 2015 review conference. This has had negative consequences on the effectiveness and credibility of the treaty during this critical time of, in the world and in the Middle East in particular. In conclusion, the delegation of Iraq calls on all state parties to prioritize the noble objective, which is to preserve the future of humanity and to work with greater flexibility in order to make the upcoming review conference uh, a successful conference. We must give due importance to promoting and strengthening both the regimes for non-proliferation and disarmament in order to reach constructive results that satisfy the concerns of all member states. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Iraq for his statement. I now give the floor to Her Excellency Ms. Claudia Bloom de Barbieri, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Colombia, to make a statement. Señor Presidente. Mr. President, as indicated by Secretary General Antonio Guterres in the disarm agenda presented in 2018, the United Nations, since their founding, have sought to eliminate nuclear weapons and all other weapons of mass destruction throughout the world. These weapons are a singular existential threat to humanity, our civilization, and indeed all forms of life. Colombia notes with concern that in today's world, there are approximately 14,000 nuclear warheads with the ability to erase any trace of life from the planet, even if only a small amount of these warheads were used. As a non-nuclear state, I reiterate Colombia's commitment to the disarmament and non-proliferation regime, which is part of the core security system in the Charter of the United Nations. 
with this conviction and as a member state of the Tlatelolco Treaty, we believe that keeping our territory free of nuclear weapons is a significant contribution to encourage peace building and development. We also acknowledge the importance of the peaceful uses of nuclear technology, which offers innovative solutions to health, agriculture, environmental sustainability, and food security problems. And these solutions are essential to make progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals. The 10th Review Conference of the Non-Proliferation Treaty to be held in January 2021 should be an opportunity to extend technical cooperation in this field. I also wish to acknowledge the importance of civil society in creating awareness about the elimination of nuclear weapons. The initiative of the International Campaign for the Abolition of Nuclear Weapons with other non-governmental organizations gave rise to the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which Colombia signed in 2018. Furthermore, we support the various efforts of countries in the disarmament area. Amongst them, we welcome the negotiations of the New START Treaty, and we also welcome the support uh, which the international community offers to these consultations. Distinguished delegates, this year, we noted the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. One of the survivors, Mikiso Iwasa, who died a few weeks ago, devoted uh, their lives to upholding the memory and making the world aware of the need uh, to eliminating the use of this kind of weapons. Today, more than ever, we must bring our efforts together to respond to this, to this shared challenge. Colombia firmly believes that in this age of technological progress, our common objectives must focus on cooperation to promote well-being in all our societies. The International Day for the, the Complete Elimination of Nuclear Weapons is a day which should strengthen our resolve to move towards a world where nuclear technology is only useful for peace, development, and the common good. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Colombia for her statement. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Ecuador to introduce a statement by the Minister. Gracias, señor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It is my honor to introduce the statement of His Excellency, Mr. Luis Gallegos, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Human Mobility of Ecuador. En el presente año, no solo está this year, we are not only celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Foundation of the United Nations. We are also recalling with sadness that 75 years ago, too, the first atomic uh, detonation took place, as well as the first uh, use of nuclear weapons in war against Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Faced with the obvious horror and the catastrophic humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons, the efforts for their elimination have been a constant part of the history of the United Nations, and Ecuador has constantly supported these efforts through its diplomatic activity. The first resolution the General Assembly approved on 26 January 1946, formally presented uh, for consideration by the plenary by Homero Viter Viteri La, F La Fronte, an Ecuadorian diplomat, called for the elimination of atomic weapons from national arsenals. In the following decades, in the United Nations, various essential instruments have been adopted. 
the final purposes, which is the total elimination of nuclear weapons, beginning with the Non-Proliferation Treaty. In full accordance with Article 6 of this treaty, my country, together with the great majority of states, participated in the negotiation and adoption of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in 2017. Its prompt entry into force uh, is something we welcome. We encourage states which already have not yet done so to sign and ratify this instrument. Its entry into force uh, will uh, prescribe uh, nuclear weapons. Another fundamental instrument is a comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty. I reiterate Ecuador's call for states which have not yet done so uh, to ratify or sign it as quickly as possible, making it possible for it to enter into force. We express the need for all states to absorb the moratorium for all kinds of nuclear tests. With our sad uh, memory of the Hibakusha, the dead, and the survivors of uh, nuclear attacks on, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and all the victims around the world of nuclear tests, Ecuador firmly expresses that never again must humanity be witness to a nuclear explosion and its catastrophic consequences. Lastly, let me express a consideration on the expenses of maintaining nuclear weapons. The figure is equivalent to 30 years of the budget of the World Health Organization. This is census, especially now that the international community is making major efforts to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ecuador for his statement. I now have the honor of giving the floor to Mr. A.K. Abdul Momen, Foreign Minister of Bangladesh, to make a statement. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations was created from the ashes of the Second World War. The devastation and human suffering caused by the nuclear bombing shook, shook the world and the collective conscience of humankind. The UN, in its very first resolution, ambitioned a world free of nuclear weapons. Since then, 75 years have passed. We are celebrating the achievements of the UN, its contribution to the welfare of the people and the planet Earth, and also global socioeconomic progress. Yet, in stark contrast, our present and future generations continue to live under the threat of nuclear catastrophe. And now the COVID-19 pandemic has presented before us the long-established truth in a more glaring way that stockpiles of weapons fail to save human beings. Investment in nuclear weapons, therefore, cannot ensure nor guarantee peace and security. It is rather through realization of sustainable development goals that we can establish and sustain peace and stability. Mr. President, our father of the nation, Bangamundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, in his historic speech before the Assembly in 1974, appealed to spare the world from the scourge, scourge of nuclear war. This forms the cornerstone of Bangladesh's steadfast commitment and adherence to nuclear disarmament. We are a party to all major nuclear disarmament treaties. We are also among the 44 countries that have ratified the Treaty on Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Nuclear technology has been recognized as capable of both tremendous benefit and equally unimaginable destruction. Bound by our constitutional obligation to disarm disarmament, Bangladesh rejects the use of nuclear technology for destructive purpose and supports its peaceful application for development and welfare of humankind. To harness the benefit of nuclear technology, Bangladesh is building nuclear power plants for peaceful uses. Mr. President, today as we commemorate the International Day for the Elimination of Nuclear Weapons, I would like to flag few points. First, nuclear weapons themselves 
are the problems. And as the former Secretary General of UN, General, General uh, Secretary General Ban Ki Moon stated that, and I quote, there are no right hands to handle these wrong weapons, unquote. Therefore, Bangladesh steadfastly supports the goal of a world free of nuclear weapons. Second, nuclear weapon states need to take concrete steps to seize nuclear arms race and also to get rid of the risks of nuclear weapons falling in the hands of wrong people, I mean terrorists. Third, nuclear weapon free zones need to be established in all parts of the world through ratification by the nuclear weapon states. They also must rectify of the related protocols to all treaties establishing such zones. Fourth, the potential of nuclear technology for benefit of humankind and in enable rights of states for research, production, and peaceful use of nuclear energy without discrimination must be fostered through effective international cooperation. And finally, total elimination of nuclear weapons is a long overdue commitment. The pandemic has made it a relying, relying call more than ever before. Mass awareness and global advocacy need to be promoted and accelerated through effective partnership, including with civil society organizations. On this momentous 75th anniversary of the United Nations, let us recommit to use our scarce resources for realizing sustainable development goals and making this world safe and livable for our present and future generations. I thank you. I thank the Foreign Minister of Bangladesh for his statement. I now have the honour of giving the floor to Her Excellency Ms. Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica, to make a statement. Mr. President, since its inauguration in September 2014, the commemoration of the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons has kept the issue of global disarmament efforts at the forefront of world attention. Each commemorative event, therefore, represents a further opportunity to focus on advancing the goal of achieving a nuclear weapons-free world. Jamaica, as a non-nuclear weapon state, has been playing its role in advancing nuclear disarmament. Jamaica has strengthened its legislative and administrative framework to combat nuclear weapons proliferation by enacting the Nuclear Safety and Radiation Protection Act and establishing its implementing agency, the Hazardous Substances Regulatory Authority, to regulate the use of ionizing radiation and nuclear technology for the protection of people, property, and the environment. Mr. President, to further global efforts towards the elimination of nuclear weapons, Jamaica will shortly ratify the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. It is undoubtedly positive that nuclear weapons have not been used since 1945. However, the threat continues to loom as tense relations exist among nuclear weapon states. As a community of nations, we can do more. Non-proliferation is insufficient. We know from history that the use of nuclear weapons has devastating humanitarian effects inflicting mass death and destruction. We also know that the strengthening of national nuclear weapon systems diverts resources from the world's biggest threats, such as climate change, inequality, and pandemics. Mr. President, to achieve general and complete disarmament under effective international control, we must all recommit to cooperative dialogue in good faith, utilizing the multilateral system that was created for that very purpose. We call on states that have not joined the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, 
and the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons to consider doing so as a matter of urgency. Jamaica stands with all states parties to treaties such as these, which support the global goal of a world that's peaceful and secure for present and future generations. We will do our part. Jamaica remains committed to the disarmament agenda. We join the international community in working to eliminate nuclear weapons. Their presence has no role in the future we need. I thank you. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica for her statement. We have heard the last speaker for this meeting. This afternoon at 3 p.m., we shall continue to hear statements in this hall. Before adjourning the meeting, I would like to remind members of the mitigation measures, especially the physical distancing requirements in and around the hall. Following the arrangements in recent meetings, the Secretariat will actively manage the exit by calling each row for departure in a staggered manner. Members are therefore requested to remain seated after the adjournment of the meeting. The meeting is adjourned. Distinguished delegates, for social distancing purposes, I now kindly request delegates to depart the hall in the following order. First row from Iceland to Italy. From Jamaica to Latvia.